Get inside, get what we need. And this is this week's Closet Classic. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Issues in Burlington. My name is Phil Gallagher. This is part one of a six-part series, the objective of which is to inform the citizens of Burlington on issues of common interest. Our topic today is water in Burlington. I'd like to welcome our guest, State Senator Carol Amick, Department of Public Works Superintendent Harold Publicover, and William Keene, Water Treatment Plant Supervisor. I'd like to address today's first question to Senator Amick. Senator, you are the chairperson on two important state committees related to water. What is your role in them, and uh, what are the names of the committees? The two committees are the Committee on Natural Resources and Agriculture, which handles all environmental legislation for the, the, the House and Senate. The committee uh, reviews annually about 800 proposals, uh, addressing water issues, hazardous waste, uh, fishing, uh, anything that relates to the environment and protecting the citizens of the state. We have a number of water bills that come through this year bec uh, and every year because the public is beginning finally to realize that our Massachusetts water supply is a limited supply. It is not something that they can just freely give away and allow to be contaminated. The second bit, uh, committee is a legislative commission called the Commission on the Adequacy of Water Supply in the Commonwealth, big name uh, for the commission, which is better known as the Water Supply Commission. It was established back in 1977, about the same time that I became extremely interested in water uh, issues, because at that time, my hometown of Bedford had lost 80% of its drinking water supply due to chemical contamination of four wells in the town. But the Commission on Water Supply annually prints reports that we distribute to local officials. Uh, we recommend legislation. Uh, both committees have staff that assist local officials. This is our latest report. It's a report on chemical contamination. The front cover shows the map of the state and pinpoints the I, all the incidences of of contamination to drinking water supply. Uh, the commission also deals with such issues as uh, sodium contamination or uh, uh, the excessive usage of sodium chloride in, in uh, uh, road salting. We have been very involved in uh, a problem that um, uh, Burlington was party to a couple years ago, and that is the so-called vinyl-lined uh, asbestos cement pipes that were giving off tetrachloroethylene into the water, and the TCE was potentially a health uh, risk to persons who drank it. We were involved in that as well. What, what important uh, legislation, or what you view as important legislation that's currently in the legislature or before your committees? Uh, I think that the legislature's main goal as far as water uh, quality and quantity uh, policy is to establish a statewide framework for uh, identifying what water policy should be in Massachusetts. Because we have 351 cities and towns, each with its own parochial interests, some of those communities are what we call water rich and others are water poor. Burlington, by, uh, uh, for example, is a water rich community. It has a good source, good sources of drinking water supply and in fact is contacted by uh, adjacent communities who are looking to purchase some of that water.
but we are trying to establish a statewide water policy so that we can then get local communities to do uh, to review what their their policy should be and establish a water management program for each city and town then have the communities work on an on a basin uh, uh, basis working with all the other communities in the same basin from which they all get their same drinking water and have them develop a regional water supply policy and ultimately that policy will be translated into a state policy besides that we uh, have filed legislation to establish a procedure for detecting leaks in underground gas and oil storage facilities. Uh, we have legislation to ban the use of certain toxic chemicals that are uh, septic system cleaners. And uh, uh, many people don't realize when they buy these products that can be bought in drug stores and hardware stores that there, there are some uh, improper ways in which they're used. We uh, file a number of bills dealing specifically with the Metropolitan District Commission system, the MDC, because it is the largest single water uh, distribution system in the state. And uh, one of the bills that we are hoping to get to, through the legislature this year that I, I know Burlington is very excited and interested in is legislation to increase the reporting process for reporting the use of, of, of sodium chloride on the, the roads. Right now, we have a situation where the state is using a tremendous amount of sodium chloride. That salt is running into the uh, groundwater and contaminating the drinking water supplies. As a result, the state law requires Burlington and other communities to notify its residents that there is a high level of sodium in the drinking water because it can impact your health. And so we have a situation where one state agency, the Department of Public Works, the state level, is forcing, uh, um, is causing this problem, and another state agency, the Department of Environmental Quality Engineering, is making the town report to the community about the problem. Okay. With sodium in mind, I'd like to switch over to Mr. Public Cover. Uh, we recently did get a notice that the uh, sodium level in Burlington was, uh, was elevated. Uh, who is using salt in Burlington and how much? Well, the uh, maximum contaminant level allowed by the, the drinking water regulations for Massachusetts is 20 parts per million. And our uh, average of four quarterly tests is 50 parts per million. The town uses salt in their de-icing program in a very restricted manner. Uh, this past winter is the most usage over the past five years. On a five-year average, the town has used about 540 tons to take care of 350 lane miles of road, which averages out about a ton and a half per lane mile per year. The, uh, we feel, most of the water superintendents feel that the, again, as the senator said, that the principal offender is the state DPW, and during the years 1965 to 1975, uh, they averaged 13 to 32 tons per lane mile per season, which is uh, uh, close to 10 to 14 times what the town uses. We usually mix a 3 to 1 sand to salt or 5 to 1 sand to salt. When it's extremely cold, we use no salt at all. Uh, last year at the town meeting, uh, the uh, town meeting membership approved a, an appropriation for a state salt shed, or part of an appropriation that the state was going to match the rest, I think. Has uh, that been built, and when it is built, will it have any, any effect on uh, groundwater supply? Uh, it has not been built. There's been a problem. It's a state contractor who has defaulted in two consecutive years. We're scheduled for construction this year. The location is behind Almy's off of Route 3A and would not impact the Burlington water supply because it's on the Ipswich River Basin. It's the extreme headwaters, the first stream feeding into the Ipswich River. Uh, however, it would be advantageous to the other towns downstream, uh, Lynn, Ipswich, Essex, and everybody else that draws water from the Ipswich River supply. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back to Senator Ramick here for a moment. 
Uh, you had spoken earlier of legislation. I, I just for an overview of our, our regional situation, what is the general condition of, of the region's water supply? I know we have a, a good situation with the reservoir, but what about the surrounding communities, Bedford, Lexington, and Burlington, Woburn? What's the general condition? Uh, each community is, is in a different situation. Uh, the town of Bedford, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it had lost a large percentage of its drinking water supply due to con chemical contamination. Uh, trichloroethylene and dioxane were found in four wells, and those wells were immediately shut down. In those days, because the state did not have the sophisticated equipment available to test for toxic pollutants in the water supply, it took the state almost a month to agree with the town's decision to close the wells. We've come a long, long way since then, and all drinking water supply supply samples are tested up in Lawrence at the state experimental uh, testing station as well as tested by private water testing companies for not only bacteria, bacterial uh, contamination uh, but for also toxic or chemical contamination. Bedford is paying $1,500 to $2,000 a day to purchase drinking water from a number of other communities in the past including Burlington. Uh, the town of Lexington is on the MDC system, and Lexington purchases its water through the MDC and is also a purveyor of water to the town of Bedford, selling its MDC water at a much higher rate to the town of, of uh, Bedford. Uh, Bill Ricca is supplied via uh, its uh, reservoir system from the Concord River and quite recently was very concerned because um, downstream or upstream uh, in the town of Acton, Grace Chemical Company proposed to clean out some of its very badly contaminated wells by aerating the water, which means spraying it up into the air and then dumping it into uh, the river. And ultimately that would have meant it would have come flowing down the Concord River. And uh, there was tremendous concern about that proposal uh, for the town of Bill Ricca because they were afraid that this might affect their drinking water supply. Woburn is on the MDC system partially and also has some of its own wells. So in general, you would say that the supply is good with perhaps the exception of Bedford having the largest problem? Well, yes and no. I think uh, uh, Superintendent Public Hover will want to comment more specifically on Burlington. All the communities in the Burlington area have been growing for a number of years, commercially, industrially, and with new uh, uh, single-family homes. And up until the last couple years when we had these incidences of illegal dumping that caused pollution to our drinking water supply, no one thought about groundwater contamination. Uh, now they are, and they're beginning to realize that the uh, water is um, a source that could be contaminated forever and they have to start conserving it. So Burlington has been very aggressive over the years doing studies to determine what kind of growth can occur in the community and still have enough drinking water. The town of Bedford is spending several millions of dollars to seek alternate drinking water supplies by uh, drilling wells along the Concord River. That water is, um, uh, contains a lot of iron and manganese and will need to be treated. The treatment costs are going to be great for the town of Bedford, but we have no other solution. We could seek to join the MDC, pay a multi-million dollar fee, but the MDC system is uh, exceeding its safe drinking water yield by over 25 million gallons a day. So that, you know, we really, we, people don't realize that we are just on the edge of a critical situation. And if the state suffers a drought as we went into last year, but apparently the weather people say we're, we're all right again. If we suffer a long drought, there will be a number of communities whose water supplies will dry up. Earlier in your report, you had, uh, from your committee, you had alluded to hazardous waste locations. Do we have any major hazardous waste locations, dump locations in Burlington? Are there, uh, do we have that problem here? No. Uh, there are. Uh, industries in Burlington that are licensed 
and permitted by the state and have been grandfathered under our most recent hazardous waste management laws which generate hazardous waste. Uh, and they store them on site and they make arrangements to transport them to other facilities where they can be treated. In some cases, the treatment is going on right on site. There have been isolated minor incidences over the years. I can remember a company off of Route 62 um, where there, there's a little brook that runs behind uh, Route 62 as you're entering, uh, going from Bedford towards Burlington and, and driving alongside MITRE, there was an incident where a company dumped some uh, chemicals into that brook. Uh, that was quickly detected and cleaned up, those kinds of things. But there are no hazardous waste dumps to speak of in Burlington, at least not that I know of. Well, one uh, issue that may be sensitive to the surrounding communities is our land that's landlocked up on Route 3. Uh, do you feel as though that these, uh, this parcel should be developed and, and would it have a negative effect on Lexington or, or Bedford's ground sources of water? The uh, development of that land has been very controversial, as you know, over the years. Uh, Bedford and Lexington's major concern, I think, has been more of, of, of being worried about an industrial complex uh, adjacent to residential homes that are right on the border in Bedford and Lexington and the need perhaps to have uh, not only an exit or an access road coming from Route 3 but also a secondary access that might feed out into Bedford or, or Lexington. Uh, many years ago the town of Bedford um, put together a group of, of professional engineers and some water supply people who did a study of that landlocked land. Portion of the land provides, is wetlands and does provide um, a, a part of the area that protects Bedford's water supply. A, a buffer type zone? Yes. Uh, people forget that wetlands are natural um, cleaners. They, the water uh, filters through the wetlands and is purified before it gets into the groundwater and then ultimately is become someone's uh, drinking water. And there are portions of that, of that development. It wouldn't be fair of me, however, to say that that large tract of land couldn't be safely developed as long as the appropriate measures were taken to protect those wet areas and those, those particular areas. Okay, I'd like to go to uh, Mr. Public Cover and um and ask about your statement on town meeting floor about well number three. Apparently we were at that time purging 40,000 gallons a day of water to remove some uh, trace contamination of trichloroethylene. What, what's the current status? Well, of that? Uh, that was well number four. Well, well number four. Yeah. four and we, we got, <coughs> it's now, it's not online, it's still being purged at a rate of about 400,000 gallons a day. 400,000 gallons. And it's going directly into the um, MDC sewer. The reason for that is we, we have reason to believe uh, that we are cutting off any underground plume from reaching wells three and five, which are a little bit uh, farther into the Great Meadow. Uh, there's quite a bit of evidence that we have been successful in short stopping the plume. Where it's, but we don't know where it's coming from yet. Well, that's what the aquifer the aquifer study is involved with. Okay. Also, uh, it seems the trend in energy and water and everything else that we, that we need desperately has been conservation. What, what is the town doing to conserve water? Well, we, uh, the most effective conservation means that we have instituted was the change in our water rates, where we have an increasing rate with an increase in use, which has uh, the, the latest water bill. Uh, have brought a, a, a direct realization to the homeowner that uh, water costs money. Uh, we are nowhere near recovering our overall costs, but we have, we will notice, we expect to notice a decrease in the usage. The second thing that we've done, and it's, it's rather important, is the implementation of a prompt leak repair program. Burlington doesn't wait a weekend, uh, wait a week to repair a water leak. As soon as it shows, we repair it. Our last leak detection program about three years ago uh, came up with about a 
percent loss through leakage. Now that's water that's been pumped from the Shawshine and pumped through the water treatment plant. So we've incurred a sizable cost to, to have a leak. It hasn't gone through the cash register, which is our water meter. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, received a grant on the 805 program to implement another leak detection program. Uh, we do have no, a normal summer restriction to handheld watering devices. We feel that that's helped. The MDC sewer permit program has helped. They've gone into all of our business and uh, manufacturing facilities and asked that cooling water used for air conditioning be removed from the sanitary sewer and go into the drain. Now all of this good water that was being used for cooling is being used now to recharge the aquifer. So uh, we have uh, one other thing that I really should mention is the planning board analyzes the needs of every site plan. So what is the impact on our water supply, both on usage and the occupancy of the aquifer? You recently asked for demographic demographic study of the, the growth potential of Burlington. Yes, water yeah. play a large part in this. It certainly does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, along with water, you. With the consumption of water, we have the added problem of what to do with it afterwards. What major uh, drainage projects and, and water-related projects do we have on the boards right now? Well, at the present time, we hope to implement the uh, leak detection program this current summer, uh, followed by, if we are uh, fortunate, a rehabilitation program under the 805 grant to eliminate some of the dead ends. The next thing is uh, a forthcoming appropriation in the present warrant to make a math model of our distribution system to assess our present capabilities. We then follow it with a master plan at a later date. Have, have budget cuts affected the master plan? Uh, not at this time. We're not quite ready for it yet. Okay. I'd like to switch to Mr. Keene now. Uh, the reservoir has been brought up a number of times as a, as a thing that we did in the past that was very aggressive towards taking care of our, our water problems. Uh, how is the reservoir filled? Uh, is it an endless supply? What is its current uh, capacity and volume? Hey, the Mill Pond Reservoir is an off-stream impounded storage reservoir. Its sole source of water is from the Shawshine River. We have a five miles of 24-inch water main that lifts water from the Shawshine River, just in back of the vocational school, up and into the lake. The uh, mill pond is not an endless supply. It is designed to have a safe yield of 3 million gallons per day. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really not what you would call you know, the end result. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a temporary thing. Uh, it, we can divert more water if there is water under the uh, current legislation that we have, if the CFS, the cubic feet per second, flowing down the river is above 25 CFS, we can uh, divert um, 8 million gallons of water a day. If it's under that, we can run just one pump, and if it's under, uh, if it's too far down, then we have to stop diverting water at all, you know, completely, like during this recent drought. What, what is its current capacity right now? It is currently full. It, has, it can contain 513 million gallons mm -hmm. maximum capacity. Uh -huh. Uh, how much are we consuming right now of that uh, of the, the daily flow? Well, currently we're uh, the average in the past in 1981 was between 3.2 to 3.5 million gallons of water per day. On the average, we have a peak of around 6.2, 6.3 million gallons, uh, with a, a maximum weekly somewhere around 40, 42 million gallons. Mm -hmm. Are we are we currently selling any water to anyone? In the past, we sold to Bedford. Are we selling any right now? Currently, no. We're not diver uh, diverting any water to any of the neighboring towns. We have the capability to sell water to uh, Woburn, Wilmington, and Bedford. We have in the past sold them on an emergency basis. Okay. Do you foresee a situation that's coming up where we will be selling any? Uh, I see none right at this moment. Right now, all the towns have uh, excellent um, uh, sources of water right now. Bedford has a, an outside source. Um, I see no reason right now to be selling. Okay. Uh, in the town report, you mentioned that uh, well number one was destroyed by fire. What, what's the current situation there? How has that affected our, uh, our situation? 
Uh, currently, the uh, as of today, the uh, well number one was uh, finally put into uh, into service. We are now uh, currently uh, diverting water at that particular well. This will add uh, another 10 percent to our uh, capability, 10 percent production capability. Uh, it is a uh, an excellent well and it is currently uh, uh, should be right into the drinking water system within three days. Okay. Also in the town. In the town report, uh, you had mentioned that the town, our town sludge management program is outdated and that we were uh, having odor and uh, taste problems as a result of a septic blanket that's forming on the, uh, on the bottom of the, of the pond. What, what exactly is sludge and what's a good management program? Well, the mill pond was actually uh, designed in the mid-60s. It was first conceived in the, uh, well, I'd say late 50s and finally uh, uh, some work was done into the 60s and finally was put online in uh, April 1973. Now, uh, the plant was designed uh, to only act as a backup to our groundwater supply. Although uh, they did not foresee any particular problem with our groundwater sources, they figured that they would maintain being the backbone. In fact, when I initially started, uh, 75 to 80 percent of all water came from our groundwater sources. Uh, now it is being reversed. It's, uh, most of our water is now coming from the water treatment plant. Uh, because of increased production uh, and uh, also the philosophy that was held back in the 19, uh, uh, you know, late 60s, uh, the idea was that we'll, we'll, we'll conserve the water that we use in-house, backwashing filters and what have you, the uh, water that we use that's in the sludge basins, the sedimentation tanks, what have you, is diverted back up into the mill pond reservoir. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, with increased use, you also have increased sludge production. Now, this sludge is in, uh, has crept from one small area out into uh, the deeper areas of the lake. Uh, the lake is what you call a stratified lake. Uh, it's, in fact, you call it on, now oligotrophic lake. It has three definite thermal layers. The bottom has, uh, because it, there is very little mixing, has gone anaerobic. It is septic. The sludge is acting as a... Uh, uh, a uh, enhancer to uh, you know create some of the problems that we have. Uh, the sludge that we produce is very very inert. Uh, it's basically hydroxides uh, that have removed uh, the organic matter from the water. The primary source of pollution in the in New England is really the organic cull. That's really what most water treatment plants in New England in the past have always tried to to remove is the organic cull. Uh, the, uh, what we need is a, uh, a proper uh, sludge management uh, lagoons, uh, sedimentation lagoons, where we can dry the sludge and remove it to a, uh, it's innocuous, uh, you can move it on to a, uh, uh, a, uh, a landfill area, mix it with uh, other fill and, uh, and use it uh, at that point. Briefly, Harold, we only have a minute or so to go. Do we need another waste treatment plant? Well, not, not at this time. We don't until we get a projection of our future needs, it would be premature to say yes or no. It's one of those things that has to be determined by proper study. At the present time, the answer is no. If they change the water quality standard, make them a little bit hotter, particularly on iron and manganese, we may need another plant, not of the magnitude that we have. It would okay. So that brings to a close today's program. I'd like to thank our guests, Senator Carol Amick, Harold Public Cover, and William Keene. Uh, next week's topic is traffic. Thank you very much.